Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are next. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. For now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me this week, we have Eugene. Or not. Hello. There he is. We have... Um, Amy. Wow. Okay, Morning. So, okay, so Amy and Eugene have now officially swapped names. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Stuart. How to do? So yeah, so this week we are covering the two new Star Trek trailers, as well as our review on X Men Apocalypse, and. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. We've got some news, and we've got... Eugene's got his model report, so it's going to be a fun week. So, let's get started. First up, we have the CBS TV series um, trailer, which doesn't really have a lot in it, visually. Well, sorry, sort of story-wise, but it is a very visual trailer, where we sort of see a look around. We see Earth from a distance with... I think that's Earth. Yeah, it's Earth and the Moon. There's a whole warp thing. Whiz around all the different planets and stars. We see what looks like an empty planet thing. What is that meant to be? A Who comet? knows? A comet, maybe? It looks... With Star Trek, you can't really guess until you... You can never guess what anything is. Yeah, fair point. So it whizzes around, doing all sorts of cool sort of space shots. You see... Um, a planet really close to a sun, and a few other things, and then we have the logo drop. And it just it's a nice, lo- it's a really nice logo, actually. Yeah, it's a really nice logo. It says new crews, new villains, new heroes, new worlds, and then it shows what looks like a bronze-plated, sort of scratched and dinged Star Trek sort of logo. Premiere CBS 2017. Um, and coming to CBS All Access. So, um, now, Michael has a theory about this, and unfortunately he's got uni, so he couldn't join us. I thought he finished! Uh, no, yeah, it's wibbly-wobbly complicated things. The point is, he uh. couldn't join us. Um, so, he, t- he explained it to me, and my response was, uh-huh. So... Let me try and unmichael it and translate it into human. Um, or translate to Baxi. Yeah. No, no. Translate it from Michael to Baxi to human. So I'm good at the first step, not so good at the second step. It's because <laughs> you're not human. Exactly. But um, that's not the point. Um, so the, the way he said is the way, because it says new crews. He looks at that as being sort of an anthology series, so that every season will take place in a different time, with different characters. Um, And while that would be an interesting way to go for them with this, you could have a story set sort of between Enterprise and original series. You could have a story set sort of after Voyager's return, if you know what I mean. And you could have it anywhere in sort of the whole original time frame or any new time frame you want to set now it's leading to me to think that it's back in the voyager next gen sort of the original timeline as opposed to the abrams timeline um but yeah if, if it does play out sort of a one crew per season one ship per season to me that's a little bit like eh, no but if it plays out more of a um one follows one crew but across many years and that could be done really well if it's done properly so other than that the the trailer is very simple i figured we'd knock it over in a couple of minutes and move on to what dropped on friday saturday for us out out of nowhere (laughs) yeah 
It's they, they effectively released it really late Friday night, US time, and they were sort of like, if we sneak this out late at night, nerds are never up late at night, they'll never notice it dropped until, uh, until a couple of days later, and, and avoid the total crap storm that'll happen afterwards. Uh, nerds are always up at late. Yeah. <laughs> So before we move on, what are your guys' thoughts on that first trailer, the the, the CBS TV show trailer? Anything at all? Yeah, my thought was. Yep. My thought was, eh, okay. Let's let's what they're gonna do with it. So, so I'm I'm definitely curious as to where it's gonna go. But now we now we move on to the. Star Trek Beyond Hope trailer. Yeah. We're still calling it I Beyond love that. Hope. Um, so, anyway. It kicks off with um, the Enterprise approaching Earth? Whatever it's doing, it's spinning. For whatever reason. And it sort of shows... It's a Pike and McCoy. Oh, it's, 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 it's a Pike and McCoy. What the... I'm getting a lot of feedback through somewhere. I'm getting a lot of feedback through somewhere. Oh, through Eugene. Through me? Yeah. It's gone. What the? Okay. Uh, or is it coming through Amy? I think it's Amy. No, no it's, it's Eugene. It's Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> it's Eugene. <laughs> Yeah. That's... What the? Anyway. That's... What the? <laughs> it's not distracting at all. <laughs> anyway. Um, so it's, it effectively starts off with McCoy and Kirk talking about um, why Kirk joined Starfleet. I joined on a dare. You joined to see if you could live up to him. So, and then it has more shots of the Enterprise being built. A really cool shot of the Enterprise at warp and seeing the warp wake around the ship. Which is kind of cool. It sort of has a bullet travelling through atmosphere filmed at slow motion feel to it. So, um, and then, oh, that was loud, sorry. Common, you know. It's easy to get lost in the vastness of space. So we see the Enterprise going into a dock somewhere. We see people doing scans and running around having a look. There's only yourself, your ship. What happened? Um, I don't know. Um... You really want to head back out there, huh? <coughs> so it shows them getting the Enterprise out of the dry dock and launching and flying around, and then the swarm. Oh man, that swarm. About a hundred kajillion zillion drones swarm around like the drones in Stargate Atlantis fired by the Ancients, and just tear the... Enterprise to shreds. They abandon ship, and a heap of the pods get caught by the drone things as we see the main hull of Enterprise just get annihilated. Then we get to the surface and we meet all the different chicks and all the different bad guys. Um, and, oh man, that. what What's the guy's name that plays the bad guy in this? I've forgotten. He looks spectacular in this. And then, as we cut along, we get introduced to the Franklin. It's the, it is the Franklin, isn't it? Hello? 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 We're here. We're here. So, so, Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Um, I just don't hear Stuart. So, 
Anyway, it's sort of those different shots, and then we get to see, for the first time, the Franklin, which looks very much like an NX-01 style, like an NX-class ship, which is what it's, Simon Pegg has said, it's, it's based on the NX design. Um, so it's meant to be sort of the, the ship that came after the NX. So we're expecting it to be relatively weak compared to um, the Enterprise. And because it was abandoned on this planet for as long as it has been, um, who knows what the actual specs are. It might only be Warp 5 capable as opposed to the Enterprise's Warp 7. It might have low yield phases. It may not even have photon torpedoes. Um, maybe that's the advantage because the drones might lock on a highly advanced technology to tear it to shreds if they're automated. And this thing might be enough of a piece of junk for them to for the system just to ignore, flat out ignore it but who knows um the trailer itself looks really really cool really really cool and i'm definitely looking forward more so now than i was a week ago to watching that movie i would still rather not watch that movie but yeah you get that so what are your guys thoughts on the trailer i like the trailer I was actually willing to go. Uh, Star Trek might might have might be uh, Star Trek Beyond might have some hope. Ooh, S -S Star Trek Beyond a little bit of hope. <clears throat> the other thing on it is about the time that trailer dropped. Um, they came out and made an announcement. Did anybody hear about it? Oh yes. We were. I was waiting for the end of this to mention that about okay. what Abrams did. Credit where <clears throat> credits do. Abrams, I will now no longer be calling you Jar Jar for this. You, you have officially lost the Jar Jar title. Um, but I'll is let, that a good thing or a bad thing? I'll let Eugene drop it beyond that. Okay. Go ahead. The um. Paramount Pictures is going to be dropping their lawsuit against um, Ares Productions and Star Trek Axanar. Um, no details have been released as yet regarding what this means, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh, yes. But, but they're backing off so because the J.J. and... Um, the producer of it said, hey, this is not what you want to do to your fans. Yeah. The fans are the guys that'll watch the movie two or three times and then buy everything to do with the movie. They're the th people that'll bring in the money and you're shitting on them. Do, do you think this is a good business model, people? <laughs> and yeah. So I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in that conversation. It would not have been that straightforward. He's definitely painting himself to be a hero. Um, but... At the same time, if what he says is true and they are backing off, then, yeah, that's going to be really, really good. And the most interesting part, and this is the part that I like the most, I think the whole click on language thing played into it. You heard about that, didn't you? Yeah, I heard they went to a judge and a language international language group issued a friend of the court or thing saying you can't copyright a language especially a fictional language such as that yeah well it was it's not that it was a fictional language that it was, it was a fan made language now the history of the klingon language is that there were a portion of it was um sort of created for star trek three the original Star Trek three, if I remember correctly. Right. There was a couple pieces that were created for Star Trek the motion picture, but it was just a couple sounds. Yeah. And then they commissioned a full thing for Star Trek three, and then a fan wrote a Star Trek um, Klingon to English dictionary a few years later, and then that went nuts. Sold like crap tons of copies, and as a result, there's now upwards of a million people that speak it as a living language in the real world. And as a result, the even though Paramount had commissioned part of that language originally, it has now grown beyond that. And 
the judge turned around and said, you know what, Paramount, you can't copyright this language anymore. At which point, they saw, both Paramount and CBS probably sat up in their chairs and went, wait, what? We can't what now? <laughs> so the Klingon language is officially public domain, more or less. Which is really cool. And I'm curious as to how that will play out to other fictional languages. Uh, well, in Prelude to Axanar, they only used a few words. Exactly. So, uh. so yeah, but, but that would have been one of those moments where it made CBS and Paramount sort of stop and go, well, if this continues, and we were... One of the biggest risks, and I said this from day one, is that if some of the I's and T's weren't dotted and crossed properly... When CBS and Paramount split, Star Trek could fall into the public domain. And they're at risk of that happening, the entire franchise falling into public domain. And if that did happen, because of some clerical error 20 years ago, or longer, then that would be massive. It's like, immediately, immediately, both of them would be scrambling. So, fix up the error. Well, it wouldn't be a case of fixing up the error. Once it's public domain, it is really hard to stop it from being public domain. So, um, yeah, it would be it would be very very interesting if that Klingon language decision, how much of a role that played. So. So anyway, um, Stuart, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Ah, it's been very quiet for uh, quite a while. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on the Axanar thing? Uh, happy that it's getting dropped, that the suit's getting dropped, but curious as to what was said behind closed doors. Oh, yes. So. Oh, I'm wondering if Lynn may have threatened to walk off walk off and, and stuff. I don't think it would have gone that far. I think it would have been more of a... See, when you talk to execs, you've got to talk their language. You've got to talk money. And they would have probably... It would have, the conversation would have been more than likely along the lines of, look, we, we you, you've just lost the Klingon language as a point of money for the, for the company. Do you want to risk potentially losing other portions of the Star Trek franchise? And by alienating the fans, you're already costing us shit tons of money, crap tons of bad publicity when we don't need it. Like, ridiculous amounts of bad publicity when we're trying to release a movie, that's going to tank the movie. You're going to lose millions and millions and millions, more than you could ever get back off Axanar. So, on a sort of a cost-gains-benefit analysis sort of deal, their response would be, yeah, this is potentially too dangerous for us too much of a risk and if we drop it now we could sort of cut our losses is more than likely the direction i expect it to go i'm just like it's like it's a it's a really good thing that's happening though oh yeah yeah not disagreeing so anyway what i think we'll do now i know we're still only 20 minutes in is we'll get ej uh sorry eugene to do the ej lol 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 Team um, <laughs> to do the model, his model report. If you've got, do you have a model report? Yeah, he said he did. Yep, sweet. Um, I lose track. So much stuff happening. Um, and then we'll do the X Men Apocalypse review. A little bit. We'll do that straight after the model report, and then we'll do the news at the end. So, um, Eugene, time to do the well, model report. The, well, for the model report this week, I'm actually just going to cover some upcoming Funko Pop figures because there's not much coming out for model kits. So, uh, a few of the ones that, that might catch people's eye. Uh, Harry Potter, they're doing a set of Harry Potter figures with parts of Hogwarts Express trains. And so, so those are coming. Uh, let's see here. 
the Flash Gordon, based on the, was it 80s or 90s film? They're doing figures from that one. They're and, doing... Uh, and Stuart, wh- Flash, come on, hurry up. You know you want to. Ah. There we go. <laughs> uh, they're doing Top Gun. They're doing Dark Crystal. They're doing the A-Team. Uh, Alias. Lost. They've got an alien queen coming. Uh, let's see here. Toy Story. Warcraft. Resident Evil. Mega Man. Braveheart. Gladiator. Is the Warcraft uh, stuff to do with the movie or actual World of Warcraft? All it says is Warcraft. That's, so that's it. probably to do with Correct. the movie. So it's probably movie then. Yeah. It does Warcraft movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Twilight, who cares? <laughs> um, Ana- Animaniacs. Uh, oh, man, I missed that show. Oh, that show. Uh, Star-, Star Wars The Force Awakens Wave 3. Suicide Squad. Yeah, the Suicide Squad ones are going to be very interesting. Independence Day 2. From Arrow, uh, Speedy and the Green Arrow are coming. And Flash Zoom is coming. Oh, there's a Zoom Uh, pop. I'm going to get the Zoom one. uh, Let's see. Space Ghost. Star Wars. Supergirl TV show. I Zombie, Legends of Tomorrow, Agents of Shield, Quake. That means Daisy. Nice. Uh, Amy Winehouse, Axel Rose, Slash, uh, Power Rangers. There you go, Stuart. You have yourself another set of Power Rangers things you can get. Uh, no. <laughs> God, that would be Hawks. That'd be Hawks. Huh? Hawks. Who's Scarecrow? Power Rangers. Well, you know, you know what to get, Ghost- Scarecrow. Uh, Ghostbusters 2016. Yeah. And Wally. Wow. Yep. And that looks like like that covers most of what's coming up on those. Nice. And that's the ho- that's the hobby report from Perry County Hobbies. That's right. If you. Uh, floating around and you want to get some cool stuff, make sure you check out Perry County Hobbies. It's, it's got all the fun things. Um, so we're going to move on to the X-Men Apocalypse review. We left this till a little bit later, so um, Eugene, if he doesn't want to sit into the spoiler section, he doesn't have to, because we're nice like I'll that. I'll stick around. You'll stick around? I'll stick around. All right. Yep. Well, feel free to drop out or ask any questions and whatnot. So I think we'll start off, as always, with the spoiler-free review. Um, spoiler free review it felt longer than Batman vs Superman even though it's an hour shorter and the fight at the end didn't really make up for it that's my spoiler free (laughs) review see I actually enjoyed it yeah see I knew this was going to be one of those movies where you either really like it or you really don't like it it just comes across as one of those movies yeah it's going to split fans but I actually really enjoy it enjoyed it because i i kind of i don't know why but i like i kind of like origin stories when it comes to x-men so I, it was and for me because i actually read a bit of the x-men the the start of it uh was really cool it's was, it was confusing when it first started was <laughs> yes it's so all over the place when it first started it's like, oh, a scene here, a scene there, a scene over this way, a scene over that way. Well, especially because if you've watched the other movie before... Oh, stupid dog. Beforehand, it's confusing for the point of... You think the other X-Men are already there. But it um, just starts off before Jean and that become part of the X-Men. Exactly. It's the timelines for the X Men movies are all over the place. Continuity is not a word they use. 
<laughs> no, that is one thing we can agree on. Yeah. I oh. think that was might have been the thing that annoyed me the most. You just go, um, aren't you meant to already have be in control on that? It's like pre-sequels. I'm just going, eh. They drive me up the wall, pre-sequels. So, yeah. Yeah, you see, no, I, I enjoyed a, a lot of it. There's some things I was like, met, but really enjoyed a lot of it. Especially everything with Quicksilver. He's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I knew As you I guys said, wouldn't like him. No, 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 I like him. I just think they have way too much fun with speedsters. Yeah. <laughs> so. Way too much though. fun with speedsters. Okay. okay, spoiler free out of ten. I'm going to go... Three we already four. know what you think. Three yeah, we four. already know what you think. I know, I posted it up on Save Sci-Fi. Three or four out of ten. Eight. Eight, eight for Amy? Still An eight? eight? Jeez. Wow, that was a ch generous. I was going to give it a seven. <laughs> yeah, I, I also haven't watched a lot... Of, okay, I haven't actually watched a lot of X-Men and that. I've watched little bits, but I haven't watched a whole heap of it. So, I don't have expectations. Fair enough. Those that know me know that I really enjoyed the last two X-Men movies. And, which is why this one was, to me, sort of fell flat more than anything else. Now we're going to move on to the spoilery section, where we sort of break down the movie as quickly as we can, because we've only got about 20 minutes left. Um, so, we will endeavour to get through it as quickly as we possibly can and more than likely make more sense of the movie than the movie does. <laughs> Let's get that window Are we sure? <laughs> so, starts off um, with Cyclops getting his powers, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it starts off summer. Yeah. Yeah, which is, which is, which is, that is actually straight out of the comics, is how that actually... Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm Which not is, as I said, I love. I actually was like really happy because I was like, "How are they going to do this?" And then when I realized what they're doing, I was like, "Oh yeah." So, yeah, that, I didn't actually mind that part. That part was all right, um, and it sort of sets up Scott going to um, the Professor X's school um, really well. It does. Got to recredit you. It does. Um, and then it sort of jumps around a bit, backwards and forwards, to between Professor X, Gene, and uh, Magneto. Sort of shows him working at a metal foundry in East Germany, and it's like no, uh, it's Poland, Poland, Poland. I thought it was East Germany. I like no, his daughter's ability. It, it, it was po it was Poland because I was speaking Polish, not German. Okay, Poland it is then. My bad. Um. Yeah, it's sort of... Like, I gave this movie every chance possible. I went to the best cinema around at the comfier seats. I did the exact opposite of what I did with Captain America. I went to the worst cinema for Captain America just to try and make it so that I didn't give it fucking 10 out of 10. <laughs> I stacked the deck against yeah, no, Captain that... <laughs> America and it got good scores. I stacked the deck in favour of X-Men Apocalypse and it got crap scores. Because it just... It's too choppy for my liking. Too all over the bloody place. And... So, he's working at a steel mill, and a steel mill thing falls, and he ma he catches it with his magneto juice and saves the guy. At which point, everyone turn everyone turns on him and dobs him into the cops, who then come around to try and capture him using bows and arrows, like flint bows and arrows, and coal. Um, yeah, so he's sort of like. Look, I'll come with you. Just leave my family out of this. They, they're not part of it. Just let them go, and I'll and I'll surrender. And he's in the process of, of surrendering. They're in the process of tying his hands together, and the daughter gets really upset, and summons the crows. Goes all buddy attachy a chiha on them, and you just see just birds coming from all directions, attacking those guys. And one of them, for whatever stupid reason, still had his bow drawn at full, at full draw, and it slips out of his hand, and 
hits the girl in the back, killing the girl, his daughter, and the and, mother, and the mum. So at that up to that point, Magneto was very submissive, very sort of yes, I'll go with you, just leave them be. And as soon as that happens, it's like a switch. Uh, yeah. It's like, oh, you fucking morons! Just, just why? And he just pull, he, he takes the necklace off the daughter's neck, who had the photo of his uh, Magneto's mum and dad in it, and then just slices and dices it through all of the guys that are there to arrest him, just effectively insta killing them. Um, I know I skipped over a fair chunk to get to there, but I just wanted to get to that scene because credit for credit due, that is was a good scene. That's it. Said. Made you feel it made you feel sorry for Magneto. It really did. It really did. So, um... So, we're going to jump back a bit earlier in the movie. Um, all the way to the very, 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 very beginning. Because we forgot about the pyramid. Ancient Egypt and the pyramid of glowing gold. Uh, yeah, and the whole issue wouldn't have started if the girl hadn't left the carpet up. Yeah. <laughs> so... No, 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 that, that's later on. She means yeah, like no. how the 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 the, the beginning. <laughs> yeah, I mean like the very beginning. Ancient Egypt, giant pyramid, glowy gold. The, the light hits the top of the pyramid and glowy gold circuitry. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll go with that. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's legit ancient technology. Okay, sure, you betcha. Um, I'll, I'll accept it. Let's keep going. See how the movie goes. And they've effectively found a Wolverine-style healer back then. And the way Apocalypse works in this is that he transfers his energy, almost like Hive does in S.H.I.E.L.D., from one person to the next. Difference being that he, where Hive gains absorbs the memories, their power. he absorbs their power as well, um, which is really cool. So I got a sneaking suspicion his first power was to absorb powers. And the first power he absorbed was the ability to swap bodies. <laughs> but they do a ritual thing which gold flies up and takes his essence and whips it over onto the the other guy and the other guy's body sort of spazzes a bit and turns him into that. At which point all of the normal people in the area um, do a Besides coup. Enough, to turn. Enough. Yeah, to a coup against him and trap him in an underground buried pyramid. And that's where they sort of leave him off. And that scene where everything's crumbling and the chick is using her psycho force field stuff to protect him was kind of cool. Credit where credit is due. That was like, that was the, the, the introduction of the, 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 of the old muse was actually like really cool. Yeah. To get to see some, some sort of new powers. So. Um. And then he gets sort of trapped there. Jump forward to... Now, I'll... the main reason we're focusing on one storyline at a time, like, say, Magneto's story, and then Apocalypse's story, is because this movie is so all over the place, unless you actually stop and focus on one storyline at a time, you can't make heads or bloody tails of it. For about the first third of the movie. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Until it combines into one. Yeah, until it sort of... All the different thousand threads finally sort of start combining um so jump forward to the girl from the first of the reboot movies um who was on the beach that he that xavier wiped the memories of has been chasing down this terrorist group and finds that they've got this secret underground layer ideally so she knocks out the guy opens up the um the rug that covers it climbs down this tunnel now, the sun happens to line up with the rug, which lines, shines light down the tunnel, which hits the pyramid thingy inside there, which is the capstone yeah, from the ancient pyramid, which then activates the trippy gold circuitry stuff that still somehow works, which then revives mm. Apocalypse, and Apocalypse teleports out. These sort of instant transmissions inside a sphere. Of and blows the place up. Purple. Yeah. And he gets the hell out. Um, and that's sort of where our apocalypse sort of gets to our timeline. Because he's sort of been stuck unconscious in the Healy body guy's ability, keeping him alive. Anyway, 
so that's how he gets out. Um, the first person he runs into is Storm. Storm? As she's um, a little kid robbing people using her ability to manipulate the air. And he sees her and they become sort of like friends? She takes no, I think him... just a follower. Yeah. She takes him back to his uh, back to her place and is trying to he can't speak the language yet he touches a TV and then somehow a TV which can only receive it can't transmit manages to, <laughs> to do a thing that allows him to learn English it, no he sort of no. absorbs all the ability everything he's that's on the TV he absorbs yeah so right. he, effectively one of the abilities he gained thousands and thousands of years ago is to be able to watch every TV channel at once. How? <laughs> Fuck knows. It's never explained. Doesn't make any goddamn sense, but it's apparently a thing. So he learned, that's how he learns English, by touching a TV screen. Um, which is, considering it's Egypt and the 80s, the fact that, that it's coloured TV, I find hilarious. Considering how poor she is. Um, most... Western countries were still struggling to get colour TV in the 80s. Hell, growing up in the early 90s, I had a black and white TV. So, yeah, that's a thing. Um, so, anyway. And that's in the third world country known as Australia. Anyway, moving right along. He recruits her and uses his ability to supercharge her ability. And then they go off to... Um... And she fangirls over... Mystique. Because of what Mystique did to save... uh, The Mystique did at the end of the last movie. Um, And he's sort of like, okay, cool. She's fangirling over her. That that, that mutant... I need to do... I need to sort of tear this down and make sure that I'm the top mutant again. And they sort of purple sphere teleport away. Then we go to a cage fight, which has got the angel guy and the... Jump the Nightcrawler, the jump, the teleport. Well, it's the first. Actually, the first one you see is Blob. <coughs> yeah, Blob. Yeah, you get his ass kicked. Um, that's East Germany. This is happening in East Germany. I knew East Germany was somewhere. My brain was slightly out of sync. Yeah. Okay, so this is East Germany, um, and so the East Germans are fighting mutants against mutants, and if they refuse to fight, they both die. But if they fight until one of the others dies, then they get to live until the next fight so nightcrawler and the angel guy fight for a bit mystique sneaks in switches off the power to the cage chaos erupts nightcrawler and mystique escape and the angel guy fucks off somewhere else um, he's not happy no he's he's he's, he's, he's he's quite hurt as a result of nightcrawler um so yeah electric wings against uh, electric electrified cage mm. that'll do it so then Apocalypse approaches him next. Is it him next? Is he the second one he approaches? No. No. He, oh, no, the... no. Psylocke is the second Psylocke, one. Psylocke, that's right. So Mystique and Nightcrawler go to an information dude that Psylocke works for to get papers to help get Nightcrawler out of the country. Um, and that's sort of the introduction to... Psylocke and this other guy stuff happens, they find out that Magneto's been discovered somewhere and Mystique scurries away to find him um, well no, no she goes she, to Charles she oh, goes, yeah that's right, she, she goes, goes to, to Charles she goes to Charles to find she goes from East Germany to America to find a guy that she thinks is in Poland, back where she knew where she was anyway not the point um <laughs> Just whatever. Um, so she that's that's sort of where she's up to. She's disappeared off to Charles. Then Apocalypse turns up with Storm and confronts this information guy to get information on powerful mutants. Psylocke challenges him, he sort of effectively laughs her off, gives her the superpower juice um uh, juice up, and she joins him. Then he teleports to the angel guy supercharges him, giving him steel wings and the ability to throw his feathers, which are now knives. Because reasons? 
yeah, I, know, I still don't quite understand how this power-up ability works, but whatever. Um, and then they teleport away. Um, and then... My, sorry. This is, it, it's quite confusing, even if you try and tell it in order. <laughs> then we'll go... Okay, we'll go back to the Professor Xavier School, dearly. And Scott is being shown around by Havoc, his older brother... Um, and they're at a lake, and Jean's there, and, um, no, they're inside the building, and Scott bumps into Jean, Jean drops the stuff, and then Psyche picks it all back up without it hitting the ground, and they have a little bit of a, sort of a, a fine be like that, see if I can, sort of, sort of a... Attitude. Yeah, very attitude sort of negative interaction would be one way of looking at it. Otherwise, teen is teenagers' attitudes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. And then... It does some of the other stuff we described, and it comes back to them at the school. Oh, just... Why do we have so many different fucking threads? Why? Complicated doesn't equal good, guys. Just saying. So, Scott is at a lake. There's an archery dealie on the other side of the lake. Like a target. And... I think Eugene was playing... Uh, was actually shooting that at the time. Yeah. <laughs> Someone was actually using that target. Someone was <laughs> using that target. So they tell Scott to take his bandages off and then um, look across the water and try and hit the target, which he annihilates. And then cuts and the tree. And the, and the tree behind it. And then cuts a tree in half that's behind it. Um, it's been, what, a uh, 50-odd year old tree or more something? More than that. It's like, did you say his grandfather planted that tree or something? No, great-grandfather. Great-grandfather, yeah. It's like, it's a really old tree. Just cuts it straight in half. Um, so they give him glasses that allow him to see without him vaporising everything around him, which is those sunnies. I love the fact is that they just have rose quartz just hanging around. <laughs> yeah. So, it's like, oh yeah, we had, some of, we had some of this floating around, and if we use it for your eyes, it reason magic's the magic, and now you can see again. Yay! How putting bandages across his eyes stops the laser effect from vaporizing straight through the bandage it's like they're not there it's, that's just, i don't know but it's never explained don't need to moving right along um so mystique turns up and they use cerebro to hunt down um where um uh, no sorry Mis we'll get back to that in a second back to magneto killing all the people that's when apocalypse <laughs> turns up and juices the hell out of him. Yes? <laughs> yeah. I yes. love what he says to him. He's like, what the fuck are you? Yeah. <laughs> um, you can't stop me from killing these people. And yeah. then Box is like, Fuck. It's like, I did it for you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because he's at back at the foundry, and he's like, okay, which one of you fuckheads dobbed me in? Because I saved that guy's life. Fucking dick move, guys. Dick move. And they're just like, well... Shit, we're totally fucked. Um, he's about to go all um, psycho killer on them and sort of probably use liquid metal to to do all sorts of cool statues and stuff out of their screaming corpses. And Apocalypse teleports in and just snaps his fingers and they all just turn to dust. And Magneto's like, huh, okay, that's not good. <laughs> and teleports him away. To... Did I go back to Egypt? No, they went no. to training camp. The, uh, the, the, the internment camp that he was in. Oh, that's right. They went to the internment camp they were in. And then he juices the hell out of him. And Magneto's like, holy crap, I'm an earthbender now. Um, I had to say it. Um, so... What are you and making Avatar related jokes and everything? I don't know! It's a, it's a thing. Don't it is, know. and it's a really annoying thing. I can't help it. So, anyway, Magneto's an earthbender now. Um, you've got... If you look at the... And then... So, they then teleport away um, to... Is that when they go to Egypt? The city they turn up outside of? What city is that? I'm pretty sure it's Egypt. Yeah, they uh, are the Egypt. Yeah, yeah, it's Egypt. Yeah. It's like modern day Egypt. Yeah, and... But I thought they'd go to Charles... I thought they'd go to Charles first, or... 
No, 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 because they're outside of there and they haven't started the destruction yet. But they're outside of there and um, talking about. Wait, no, 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 no. We've we've missed a step. We have. Yeah, they went back. Uh... When, they, when, they were, when oh. they were in the foundry. Because Charles was cerebroing him when they were in the foundry, and that's when that's they teleported right. there. That's right. Charles and that. Um, that's when they contact um, Eric through Cerebro, and they're talking to him through that, and realize that Apocalypse is, like, incredibly powerful, and, like, right there. It's like, holy crap, this is just a. I love that. That's the scene where his eyes just turn to black, is. Yeah. Quite. It gave me, like, I knew it was coming, but it still gave me goosebumps. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. just a really fantastic, it was a fantastic scene. And then... I just found, I found it funny that they brought a CSI agent into, Sorry, um, bro. yeah. Yeah, the, the FBI and agent. She, yeah, and she goes, they would love this. Yeah. They're not having it. No, no, it was the NSA. They this. NSA would love this. Um, or was it CIA would love this? Something, whatever the hell she worked for, I can't remember. Um, and then they teleport into the mansion, and they f- force God Power Charles um, across to Apocalypse. And as they're teleporting out, Havoc does his energy blast, which c- misses them because they teleport out just in time, cuts straight through the wall behind it, and hits the SR-71 that Hank's been working on and just blows up the entire mansion. And Rip the Blackbird. Yeah. And that's when Quicksilver turns up and we have another <gasps> incredibly montage. fucking long, way too long montage of him, quote-unquote, saving everybody in super <laughs> slow motion. Oh, please. Him saving everyone is, like, one of the best parts of the movie. Which is really sad. It's effectively that scene when they're breaking Magneto out in the kitchen, but about ten times longer. And ten times funnier. Especially with the dog. The dog's face. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, no, it didn't work for me. It was just like, uh Come on, it can't, it can't be super serious. It's got to have a little bit of comedy in it. Yeah, it As I said, they have fun with... Serious, it was... Stupid and pointless. They have fun with speedsters. Yeah. It's like, it's like they, it could have just as easily not have blown the fucking mansion up. Okay, we'll leave the... The... Yeah, it was... Mansion it, alone. Yeah. For now. It was, yeah, it was I, one of those scenes that just sort of made me go, why? Just why? Just, I love the yeah. whole fact that they're going, everyone stay calm. You'll uh, have medical help soon. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah, the um, striker or whatever that his name was turned up. Yeah. yeah. And it's like everybody stay calm. Medical attention's on the way. And it's like take that one Wipe. and that one and that one. And Jean uses her <laughs> funky mind powers to hide her Scott and Nightcrawler. Yeah. 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 And then they teleport into the helicopter to get them out. Just when they activate. The Kryptonite, which stops them from using their abilities. Um, sound about right? Kryptonite core. It's the same glowy sort of effect. It's like, it's like, it's like oh look, there is a purple light. Now they can't use their abilities. It's, it's, it's like they did in Supergirl. There's Kryptonite in the walls of this room, which prevent you from using your abilities, but only when this light is on. So yeah, it was just one of those sort of wow moments. Um, so they get stuck in a helicopter, get taken to Striker's base... Um, <laughs> where what's the one thing you don't want to release yeah it was there, there was what who was there it was Hank it was it, there was, was Hank like, there was Mystique, Quicksilver Quicksilver um, the agent yeah the, the agent. agent I think that's it because they were looking yeah, for Charles four. Charles was gone yeah it was just the four of them were taken um, and everyone else was sort of left unconscious outside of burnout husk of the school um, and, anyway. and then we have no idea what happened to the rest of them until the end of the movie. Yeah, and then, and then every other X Men, Jubilee included, who looked cool by the way, gone, just disappeared. Oh yeah, no, just I love her look. Gone. 
Uh, I really, I'm actually like really sad because I really wanted to see if they were going to uh, to see her powers. Yeah. Maybe like, next movie. Uh, her powers are effectively front birthday party. Fireworks. It's just, wee fireworks. Wee. It's like the perfect party guest. Anyway, um, so <laughs> they, so Jean uses her abilities to make sure no one else can see them. Um, and as they sneak through it's top secret rider base thingy and they get caught and chased and they accidentally let Wolverine out who no, then not accidentally <laughs> accidentally on purpose let Wolverine out who then goes on a cameo induced um, rampage s- slaughter spree killing everyone around um, and I find it funny the people at the end don't really care about all the dead dead people <laughs> Soldiers. We'll come back to that because we'll that, that sets up the next movie. So, um, so Wolverine goes around slaughtering everybody inside except for them, um, and then Riders is about to escape. Gene stops him, takes the head clamp dealy off, and gives him some memories back. Says Logan really quietly, and he sort of goes rah, 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 and foaming at the mouth like he's got rabies, and fucks off into the bush. To the snow wilderness, shirtless, because have fun with hypothermia. Um, He's Wolverine, what do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> so they get the others free, and then they get inside the. Seriously, did that thing look like it should be made out of Lego? Their, their, their attack jet thing? Oh, that thing. <laughs> there probably will be a Lego thing of it. It's just. I, I looked at that and I'm like, how is that even aerodynamically feasible? How is that a thing? <laughs> Anyway, it's the Who most knows? it's the most clusterfuck looking transport helicopter plane jet thing you've ever <laughs> seen. It yeah, it seriously looks like a kid designed it out of Lego, and they fly off after. The flight rocket. suits are cool though. Oh, the flight suits are cool. They fly. I off... think Gene really likes the flight suits. <laughs> yeah. They fly off after Apocalypse. Who at this point, Magneto has started doing the whole. I'm going to Magneto the whole planet at once. Woo! And it started sort it of doing... Rip the Opera House. Yeah. <laughs> doing, just destroying shit willy-nilly all over the place. Um, and... I'm going, I'm going to steal a quote from Independence Day. They, they, they really like the landmarks. Yeah. They really like taking out the landmarks. Marks. Oh, yeah. So, he's doing the doing a force fieldy thing around him with thousands and thousands of tiny pieces of metal prevent anyone from getting into him. But sound can still get past, because reasons. Um, and Apocalypse is trying to be transferred into Charles's body at this point, so that he gains Charles's ability to communicate with everybody at once, and control everybody at once. Um, and so that doesn't work. But no work. more rebellion on yeah. him. Yeah, and so the X-Men rock up, save Charles, have a bit of a, a fight, um, and eventually convince Magneto to do the right thing and fight against Apocalypse and comes down to a standoff between Storm, Magneto, Cy- um, Cyclops, all firing at Apocalypse and Apocalypse just sort of standing there with a force field bubble, just absorbing everything with a little bit of concern on his face, but relatively speaking, not too many fucks to give. Um, when this- he's fighting... Um- Tele- Charles in the, my mind. Yeah, telepathically fighting Charles. And then the music... Then someone drops the mic and the music note is perfect. Like, this is one of those oh, moments music- where credit where credit is due. This scene that happens is probably the best Beautiful. In the, movie. the music is timed almost perfectly with exactly what's happening. It is credit where credit is due in the highlight of this movie for me. It's one of the few things that stopped it from being a two-star movie for me. It's, it's, why it's, it's why I gave it three, or possibly even four. Um, this one scene. So you see inside his mind prison um, that he is fighting Apocalypse in, um, you see Charles reach out to Jean and it's like, look, let go. Don't Stop bottling this thing in. Let it go. And just unleash it. And at which point you cut to the outside and you see Jean just casually walking in the sky towards... <laughs> that was amazing and, and it's like oh shit's about to get real and <laughs> yep. then Apocalypse sort of looks at her 
as if to say, oh, I got a bad feeling about this. And then, bam, she goes full on Phoenix. Now, Hello. <laughs> this is the Phoenix that should have been in X Men Three. This credit where credit is yeah, due. This is the this Phoenix. Is, this is good Phoenix. She hasn't gone dark Phoenix yet. Yeah, it's it's this is this. I is, say yet because we know it's going to happen. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is sort of brutal Phoenix. This is yeah. You know what? I'm done with you. Reaches out at him and just effectively annihilates him. And. I- I find it funny that the outfit she's wearing in his mo- in Charles's mind is the flight suit. Yeah. <laughs> See, like, of all the things to be wearing, it's the flight suit. Should have been a bikini. Damn it. Should have been a bikini. <laughs> and no. <laughs> anyway. You just want to see San- you just want to see Sansa in a bikini, don't you? That's not the point. Hey, oh. Credit where credit's due. She did a really good job in this. She did, she did all, I think like all the all the new cast did fantastic jobs actually. Yeah. I'm gonna give them all yeah. all props. They were fantastic. They did a great job of all oh. of, of rebooting it. Yeah, the, what now, do you think of Mystique's face when she found out who's Quicksilver fa- Quicksilver? <laughs> what? <is? laughs> yeah. Now, um one of the, the biggest letdowns for this movie for me was the visual effects. Some of it looked really good. Some of it looked like it was from the Flash TV show. <laughs> like there's a, there's quite a few moments in the explosion slow mo scene, which looked like it was from the Flash TV show. Well, yeah, at it, best. I think that's maybe why I liked it so much. I think that's why I hated it so much because I've got better standards for a movie than a TV show effect. Like uh, yeah. So anyway. I, the the other thing I didn't really like is I just didn't like the paint the face paint on the nightcrawler. Yeah, that was a little bit annoying. Or or at least the hair. The hairstyle just seemed we just didn't seem to work. Yeah. So. And, um, but then we come to the setup for the next movie. Oh yeah, post credit scene. That took forever. Oh yeah. <laughs> the list of people. I yeah. think it said about fifteen thousand jobs. Oh, yeah, um, no, the, going through the credits was like, oh, that's a lot of yeah. people. So, yeah, but, and then it came up with this film supported all of this stuff, and everyone in my cinema was like, okay, no end credit scene, and then end credit scene. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, no, because ev- I saw it, like, everyone in mine actually stayed. Like, no one left their seats in my cinema. Yeah, no, with us last night, everyone stayed. But yeah. just. Ha- um, so, end credit scene. What did you think? I'm, ha- I'm so happy. I've been wanting, I've been wanting one of these for ages. So I'm glad we're finally get. Oh, wait, can we just say what it is? Yes, yes. Can I just right say right. what? It is? Task Force X movie. They really did not care about all the soldiers who got killed, did they? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. They just, they just wanted all the, all the DNA. They wanted the, the blood samples from Wolverine. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, which means which means Sabretooth, we're getting Omega Red. But I don't know if they'll do a Deadpool again because yeah. he is Deadpool is Task Force X. So yeah, well, they obviously, might just Psy- bring... obviously Psylocke, obviously the, they might just replace Deadpool with Psylocke. Yeah, well, they might bring Deadpool, Deadpool into it because we know that it takes place in the same timeline. Can you imagine Deadpool, Deadpool? That'd be fucking spectacular. <laughs> So, okay, yeah, anyway. no, I'm so happy for Task Force X. Alright, so... Uh, okay, we've got less than a minute. Favourite part, least favourite part, Stuart, go. Amy, you're next. Uh, favourite part, it has to be that Quicksilver scene. Quicksilver scene? Yep. Worst part? Probably the cage fight. Cage fight? Fair enough. I didn't really care for it. Amy? It would be the, all the school getting rebuilt. School being rebuilt at the end. Oh, yep. that was that was cool at the end. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Interesting way of getting rebuilt. Low point. Um, the very first scene when they're cutting, um, the Ray Jenning. Guy, okay. yeah, that was a bit nasty. Okay, high point for me it would be the Phoenix Force being unleashed. The low point would be pretty much the rest of the movie. All right, that's it for this week. <laughs> 
Uh, catch you guys <laughs> later. Check out facebook.com slash safe sci fi, facebook.com slash safe sci fi podcast, facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom for all your different sci fi related stuff. Uh, keep, look us up on iTunes, Stitcher, and on YouTube. So, anyway, catch you later. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Ooh, I should have.